My name is Tanya Nelson, and I am London Area Director at Arts Council England, and I'm delighted to be able to talk to the Glucksman Gallery, which is in Cork in Ireland um, today about their award-winning institution. And I just want to start by um, maybe having you introduce yourself and introduce the Glucksman Gallery. Thanks, Tanya. Um, well, uh, I'm Fiona Carney, and I'm the founding director of the Glucksman, which is a contemporary art museum on the historic campus of University College Cork. Um, we just turned 18 when we received the European Art Museum Award. So we're kind of going into an adult phase of our um, uh, presence. Um, and I suppose we're in a very unique position of being um, a university gallery that manages a collection of contemporary and modern Irish art, but also I suppose that presents a changing program of exhibitions of Irish and international art, um, as well as I suppose and one of the things that was recognized in our award is the very strong outreach and programs that we do with communities of interest and place across the island of Ireland. Great. Fantastic. And it would just be really great to hear a little bit about, you know, what makes your offer unique? What, how are you kind of changing the model of, 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 of an art museum? Yeah. I mean, I think that um, one of the things that we try to do is to um, look at how communities can not just be represented within our collections, but um, be part of the process um, in terms of being commissioners for the work that will represent them. And I, I think, as you can imagine, that, that there's extraordinary leaps of faith that need to be made with the uh, wonderful artists that we work with and the extraordinary people that we partner with. Um, but this has led to some really interesting new works of art um, that then we share through a program called the Art Library, um, which goes out into places across um, rural communities, into healthcare settings, into older people's homes. Um, so into places that, you know, I suppose suppose, are, are also full of communities where people mightn't easily or ordinarily access the museum itself. And all of this kind of began during COVID. So I suppose it was that time when we, uh, all of us as museum professionals, were asking a lot of questions about who we are and what we are because our doors were closed. And we felt very strongly that we, we, of course, we wanted to continue on that care of the collection piece, but it was also about how we could continue to care for the communities that we worked with. And I think that maybe that's some of the innovation that, that happened to us, a little bit brought upon us, um, you know, not in an unexpected ways. But I suppose, you know, you need to turn a crisis into an opportunity, isn't that the thing? And um, I suppose coming out of COVID now, what's extraordinary is we're so thrilled to be welcoming visitors back to the museum, but equally to continue with that outreach, because what we've realized is that there are certainly many people who may not be able to come in regularly or even at all um, to, to visit the museum. And yet those people should, of course, have the magic of uh, and the thrill of, you know, encountering original works of contemporary art. Yeah, and that's fantastic. And I, I think it's really great, as you say, that you've kind of turned a crisis situation into something that is an opportunity. Um, and I was just wondering in terms of that piece where you say the innovation really is about getting out there and really engaging um, with those audiences. I mean, how how do you, how, how are your practices kind of different in terms of the way that you operate the museum that allows you to do that kind of level of outreach and co-creation with the, with the community? Yeah, I think, um, I suppose, you know, we're a very small team and that makes us nimble and, and, and quite, you know, uh, responsive to, to change. Um, also, I suppose in, in a sense, kind of empowering change through art is our mission. So we're, we're kind of, uh, it's in our DNA to, to think about, um, how we might enable people to participate, but kind of to trial new things and to be as experimental as we expect our artists to be. Um, and um, I think we all know that wonderful citation from Samuel Beckett, my Irish writer, about, you know, fail better. Um, so I think we have that kind of sense of, I mean, hopefully not failing too much, but experimenting a lot. Um, and I think that in a way, then it comes down to things that all museums know about um, being an active partner, but being a listening partner. Um, and that means tailoring each project to the individual needs of a specific community, because what one group of people might need to access or participate in our programs 
could look very, very different to another group. And what we found is, for instance, with our work with um, young refugees and asylum seekers, um, you know, we went in with a set of ideas and enthusiasms about how we might support them. But actually, you know, some of the things that they needed, we hadn't even thought about. And it was really important that we take our lead always from the community. Um, and I think as curators, a huge role that we have is then in matchmaking those communities with the artists who might thrive and whose practice might really flourish within the kind of very specific conversations and opportunities that arise throughout the project. So kind of what you're hoping is that the artist will equally develop through the project. Um, and so, for instance, we recently did a project with um, families experiencing homelessness here in Cork, um, which, as you can imagine, was something that weighed very heavily, I think, on all of our minds during COVID. I mean, whatever about being confined to your home, what if your place of residence doesn't feel like your home. And this is where art can have an extraordinary impact because it can be a window to thinking about other spaces. It can be a promise of other opportunities and it can be a place to imagine and reimagine worlds. So uh, we wanted to bring that knowledge to, to this community and that community generously and extraordinarily engaged with us to share their uh, experiences and ideas and thoughts. And what happened was that kind of incredible exchange between the artist Kira Roach um, and this group of women. And I remember one moment where she said, you know, I've seen parts of Cork, the city where the Glucksman is based, that I never would have encountered if it wasn't for this extraordinary group of women that kind of took her on a tour of our city that we just wouldn't, you know, to see something new through their eyes. Um, and indeed, the work that she made now comes into our collection um, and enables us, um, empowers us to, to bring that narrative and those stories to a wider group of um, people. You know, I mean, first and foremost, our students and our academic colleagues, but equally other communities to kind of share those experiences and have those experiences reflected on in a way that is um, outside the narrative of, you know, sometimes that kind of the, the very fraught political situations in which, you know, communities, disadvantaged communities might be working and to have people be invited to reflect on what their lives might be like and what it might be mean. And that to me is the extraordinary thing that art offers. It allows a reflective space for difference. And what I would hope about the Glucksman is that, you know, our kind of the, 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 the thing that we're learning to do is in, in very individual and different ways to make that space for difference um, and to, you know, allow everyone to breathe, to cradle that difference together and know that you don't have to resolve it, but that your duty is to kind of care for it and then to try and present it on to encourage an awareness of the kind of diversity that exists, certainly um, in, in our work in, in Ireland. I mean, that is really quite inspiring and amazing what you're doing. And I mean, it's really inspiring to think about, you know, the, get, having the space for experimentation, but also that space where you can come together, where that knowledge exchange and experience comes together, where it's a safe space, but a space in which it's not necessarily that there's going to be an answer, mm -hmm. but actually it's a community coming together to kind of think through something together. I think that's really, really important. I mean, I mean, to me, I can see the challenges that come with that. But do you want to say anything about particular challenges that you faced and overcome through your journeys? Certainly, there, there are always challenges. And part of the challenge is not knowing what they're going to be <laughs> until they happen. Um, so I'm sure like a lot of museum colleagues, you know, there's always a little bit of uh, just trying to be responsive in the moment to what needs might arise. Um but one of the things that came up for us, I suppose, quite specifically was, you know, sometimes you go in with um, a set of preconceived ideas about actually what a community might want or what might what or, or how we might even think about representing a community. So we did a, a wonderful project with um, uh, the LGBT plus community here in UCC um, and. Um, we had thought that we would it would be a kind of a portrait commission that it would be really nice to show the, the as they have the, that rainbow representation of themselves and to have people from the lesbian the gay the trans community t together um, and actually of course what we ended up with was this extraordinary landscape uh, urban landscape of the city because one of the things that came through really really strongly in the discussions of that group was the safety of spaces in our city and where they felt safe to be themselves. 
and how, in a way, the kind of collage of um, people that make up the LGBT community is full of difference too. And that there, you know, that, that we need to recognize that there are many, many different experiences and many different, you know, possibilities um, for for that group so that they felt actually we don't want one individual or two individuals or a history or we want to have this 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 collage of our city to represent where we need to feel safe and where we want to be welcomed um, and I think you know that was it that was this extraordinary moment to see the artist adapting responding and producing this work that recognized what the group needed to have represented of themselves but in capturing the telling of that project we now have an extraordinary narrative which in when we show that work in schools um, and the artist is very generous and will go and do a workshop with you know young people it allows us to generate the most extraordinary conversations that travel on from just the experience of LGBT people but to all of us because there is a thing about not necessarily always being identified by your gender or your you know what your race whatever it is you kind of want to be seen in in in, in a myriad complex different ways and of course course, art allows us, I always think this is extraordinary about it may be one visual image, but there are multiple interpretations possible of that image because the image is made between the person looking at it and the, and the object that you're looking at. And that allows us, I suppose, in the kind of um, learning work that we do to kind of fuel and ignite conversations around identities, plural, um, that are coming from the communities we did ourselves. So, uh, I mean, I think there's going to be a lot of museums who are going to want to follow suit and, and kind of follow your lead in this particular area. And I think, you know, you're really, from what you're telling me right now, you're really kind of advanced thinking around this whole idea of identity and the fact that we all have these multiple cross, you know, crossing identities and we want to be recognized for who we are as individuals and not by a label. Um, could Could you just say a little bit about what you think the evolving skill set is for a museum that might want to do the type of work you're doing? I mean, what has your team had to learn in terms of skills or what types of people maybe you're looking for what, that you bring into your museum community? Yeah, um, I mean, I've really been grateful for the fact that the term care is being used a lot um, in relation to um, museum practice at the moment and that we're going back almost to this kind of heartland of mm. curator as curare, which is, you know, I suppose was traditionally to care for the objects, but is being absolutely extended into that idea of attention and responsibility towards our audiences and our participants and our artists. Um, so I think that those skills are are really important in you know um that idea of being careful and caregiving um but equally i would caution against um you know putting too much on any small team or indeed on any team when they're working with communities one of the the, the great learnings that we have is to partner with the right people so if you are working with communities where there is trauma where there is you know really i mean if you're working with refugee communities um, there are, you know, a whole range of issues that museum staff are not going to be able to resolve. So it is really important that you partner with the services um, and the, the people who can support those communities. So I think partnership, being open to collaboration, being open to working with other professionals to deliver your service is how a really good museum can function. Because what we need to hold on to is the expertise of being, you know, the curators of the contemporary art. But, you know, and sometimes that can be really challenging because Many communities that we might work with, you know, we've we've worked with communities of uh, older people as well, and they might have a, a very established sense of, of what a museum is and what they want. And you bring a contemporary artist into that mix and it kind of starts to generate really fascinating conversations with a lot of push and pull. Um, but that's our role. Our role is to, to, to ensure that those communities can really start to maybe embrace and be open to the contemporary elements of the work. Um, so I think... For me, it's about knowing our expertise. Like, do you want people still to be experts? Mm -hmm. um, and then to partner with people um, where, you know, you're looking to ensure that communities feel supported. And, and that, I suppose, I often talk about the Glucksman as being a porous institution, mm -hmm. about trying to have that sense of being breathing and openness. So I think that the kind of skills that we need are people that will be 
porous and open, but know their own worth and say, yes, I'm responsible for, for, for this part. And I know that I'm the contemporary art curator and this is where, you know, my strength lies. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's really, really important. It's really about the soft skills that come with the expertise about being able to partner and being open to trying new things that I think is really important. Um, Can I just switch gears a little bit? Because you were also recognized for your sustainability efforts. And I was just wondering if you talk a little bit about your sustainable practice and how you're embedding that in your organization. Well, we're very, very fortunate, um, Tanya, because we're um, a university art museum and UCC, the university where we are nested, was the first green flag university in the world and is currently in the top 10 universities globally in the world's university ranking of sustainable universities, which is a kind of very long winded saying uh, we can lean in heavily to the expertise (laughs) of our colleagues. Um, but I suppose we take that, um, you know, privilege re- really, really seriously because we want to share that on with the museum community and particularly to kind of share the practices that we have been able to develop with our academic colleagues um, who have been able to advise us. Um, and I remember, you know, when the Glucksman opened over 18 years ago, we felt very proud that it was kind of sustainable in its architecture, but that's only one part of sustainability. Sustainability is also about a commitment to the UN SDGs. So it is a commitment to things like gender equality. It is a commitment to things like equity in kind of social issues. And this is to me is, you know, museums should remember that and know that as well as climate action, that we want to do that, make the change the planet needs by ensuring that we have a just and equitable society. Um, and again, this one of the interesting things in speaking to some of my climate scientist colleagues is, you know, we've known, they say, we've known the science for 20 plus years. And science is right. It hasn't changed. We just haven't been able to communicate it so well. We need your help to tell this story. And I think, you know, that's what's really interesting is that we've found, I, I hope we found, as so many museums have, Um, working with extraordinary artists to kind of create kind of compelling experiences that enable people to reflect on um, climate action in a way that, again, moves a little bit back from that kind of anxiety that can sometimes be produced by the kind of media narrative, which is, you know, the world is ending, nobody's doing anything about it. And what we have seen in our students and in our young people is real climate grief, And our worry would be that that would lead to a kind of a disempowerment, a feeling of, well, the world is ending and what are we going to do about it? Because you adults in the room haven't done your job. So, you know, they've had done extraordinary work in reminding us through the protests. But are we doing enough? You know, that. So what we try to do is through creative workshop, through enabling creative expression, say you can help to shift mindsets in a really different way. Again, going back to that point you made, Tanya, about the kind of soft power of museum spaces, but it is an incredible power because it it means that people are learning about the issues in a way where maybe they aren't as pushed into a response or they're not feeling as anxious. Um, So we recently did um, a really wonderful exhibition about biodiversity and kind of celebrating the incredible biodiversity that has happened here on our campus since kind of a few actions were put in place and kind of reminding communities uh, that, you know, if you do this, this is this is the extraordinary impact that will happen. And we commissioned a number of artists to make works, um, you know, in response to that. And it, it, it it feels, um, you know, really important that we find, I mean, it seems weird, but, you know, delight and pleasure and, and, and that we ask people through good feeling as well as through the panic feeling yeah. to, to know why we're doing this, why we want our gorgeous, beautiful planet um, to continue and why we want to be good custodians of it for future generations. So I think it's that thing that we've had of both being so fortunate in being part of a university community. There are are, are strong partners. But then, as we said earlier, having that, I suppose, specific thing that museums and galleries can do, that artists can do, which is provide space for, you know, really uh, good reflection, enjoyment. And as we say, hopefully we say art changes people and people will change the world. And Mm -hmm. I think, you know, that's what that's what will happen if we if we get it right. 
Oh, that's fantastic. And yeah, I mean, I completely agree with you. And I think other people will really be encouraged by the way that you are trying to move people out of the fear and kind of the fear mode into the to the action mode where collective action can really make a difference. Um, and I think museums have such an important role to play in that communications piece, but also bringing people together to act. So um, that's really fantastic. Well, um, thank you so much for taking the time to talk. Um, it's been great. And I really encourage anybody who's listening to this to visit the museum, the gallery, because I think you're doing really wonderful things. Thank you so much, Anya. And we look forward to having you to Cork at the very least. <laughs> <laughs>